Welcome to the next video in our series on our statement of faith. And this video is dedicated to the Trinity. Let me read our article for you. We believe that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit exists as one being in three persons, each person fully God. A recognition of the Trinity is required by the testimony of the scriptures and essential to Christian living and a proper relationship with God. The Trinity is not some sort of theological appendix to our Christian lives. We all know that our appendix must play some sort of function in our body, even if we don't know what it is. But we all think that, you know, if it's removed, we can live a normal life. Well, well that is true with our appendix. That is not true when it comes to the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinity is not only critical to right belief, but right living, right? When the Bible describes the God with whom we are to have a personal relationship with, it describes him in a Trinitarian framework, one being in three persons. The Bible tells us that each person in the Trinity has a specific job or function. The Bible tells us that the Trinity cooperates in the works of creation, providence, salvation, prayer, and worship. Therefore, if we pray, we actually enjoy a specific relation to each member of the Trinity, whether or not we understand it. And just because the Trinity is hard to understand doesn't relieve us from the responsibility of knowing God in this Trinitarian nature. We cannot fall back on simple, cheap, and heretical analogies uh, like the Trinity is how a woman can be a mother, a wife, and a daughter all at the same time. No, that's the ancient heresy of modalism. That says that God is one in person, but it denies that God eternally exists in uh, one in being, but it denies that God eternally exists in three persons. We can't make it fit all together by diminishing the status of one member of the Trinity, like demoting Jesus and the Holy Spirit so they all fit together. Uh, that's the ancient heresy of Arianism. Nor can we use objects like an egg or a three-leaf clover to describe the Trinity, because that's the ancient heresy of partialism, that each part of the egg or each part of the clover is a part of the clover, but it's not the whole clover, right? We have to embrace the tension of God as being one in being, yet three in person. Only then can we have a personal relationship with God. Suppose you were married to a certain woman and you couldn't describe her obvious defining features like her height, her hair color, her smell, or her laugh. That's absurd. And it's just as absurd as having a relationship with God and not understanding that he exists in a Trinitarian framework, right? Our previous statement of faith literally said nothing about the Trinity. But then again, it couldn't because it didn't affirm Jesus as fully God. Many people assume that by focusing on right belief, it only divides people. Yeah, it may divide, but it also unites. It gathers us around the God described in the Bible. And if we did not clearly define what the Bible says about who God is, well, then that might not divide us. But on the other side of that same coin, it could not unite us. Thank you.